Okay. All right. We call the uh, Tuesday, October 20th, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Uh, Joe, would you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Rich Roberts is here. Ryan Allard. Here. Joe Hammer is here. Jim Hughes. George Oikel. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Michael Vieira. Here. David Drake. Here. Yolanda Antoniak. And Tony Homicki. Here. Okay. okay. All right. So everybody will be participating. First two items we have are public hearing items. Um, just for public purposes, the way we conduct the public hearing is we ask the applicant to make a presentation, what it is they're proposing to do. The commission may have some questions for the applicant. Uh, after that, we'll open it up to members of the public who wish to speak uh, either in favor of or in opposition to the application or others who might just have general questions. Following that, um, we'll have the applicant come back, provide any follow-up information, follow-up questions from the commission. Um, if the commission members feel they have adequate information to vote on the application, we'll close the hearing, deliberate, and then vote on it. If for whatever reason there are uh, enough open items or additional information that we're going to need that we don't feel comfortable closing the hearing, we'll continue it until our next meeting. So the first item, public hearing application 2053-20Z, Borghese Building and Engineering seeking a special permit in accordance with Section 5.2. Uh, permitted uses of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for the demolition of approximately 1,581 square feet and a 2,577 square foot addition for an oil change use and associated site improvements at 750-752 Silas Dean Highway. And is there anyone here on behalf of the applicant who would like to uh, make a presentation? Yes, my name is Alan Borghese. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Um, I'm an engineer. I am a chairman of Borghese Building and Engineering. This site, along with 13 other sites, or 12 other sites, excuse me, in Connecticut, were bought by a corporation that runs Valvoline Oil Changes. And uh, on this particular site, it's uh, kind of interesting because they've decided to remove three car wash bases three car wash bays to the south side of the building. And in lieu of the three car wash bays, construct two bays of oil change. Um, the, the building that uh, we're, we put up here is not the standard prototype of Valvoline. It's uh, not compatible with the design of the building that's there now. So what we tried to do here is, we think the building is attractive and we try to match the existing building the best we can. Uh, the new construction is in square footage larger. However, there's portions of it that are underutilized because there is a basement underneath the oil change. The way, the way these oil changes work in Valvoline today is the customer never gets out of the car. He drives up to the garage door. Uh, they direct him into, into the, the bay. He sits in his car. The person sits in their car and uh, they remain there throughout the oil change experience, and then they leave. The oil changing is done from beneath with a, with a basement. Um, and we've done a lot of modifications here. Your city engineers worked with us very closely. First of all, we did uh, approach and go through the design review. Uh, they thought the, uh, the new design was pleasant. Um, part of our thinking here and our attempt here was to actually make the highly intense impervious pavement, but for those of you who don't know what the word means in the audience, the impervious lesser and increase the green and the plantings and the landscaping on this site uh, and kind of separate the two operations, not 100%, but substantially separate them into the car wash on the south side 
I mean, excuse me, car wash on the north side and the oil change on the south side, although customers can uh, go back and forth between the two. Um, the, there was a lot of concern here of trying to make uh, and meet better the qualifications of the uh, economic, excuse me, the environmental protection of the site. And in doing that, we've actually produced a couple of things. We have an infiltration basin in the front of the building, trying to recharge the, the groundwater with fresh water from the roof. We have a uh, infiltration area in the rear of the, of the property, and also a vortex unit, which we installed on the discharge of the stormwater from the site. So we have taken a lot of precautions to um, improve this. We've also on the south side where the oil changes substantially increase the plantings. Um, I don't know if I should go into all of the details and all of the comments um, from all of the agencies that have looked at this. I will say that the engineering department came up with a list of comments. Uh, we've tried to provide some interchange of the, of the ability for people that go into the car wash to actually make a circle around and come back either to the Valvoline and or to the vacuum stations behind the building without entering onto Silas Dean Highway. <clears throat> we've narrowed some driveways down and we've made the traffic uh, highly improved. The city engineer has not finalized all the comments. I don't think he had time to read all of my final adjustments. Um, so I'm anticipating probably having a meeting tonight and then <clears throat> see what his comments are in the next couple of days and then adjust those at the next meeting. But I'd be very happy to take questions from the commission. Yeah, I mean, actually, you you um, <laughs> preempted the one of the questions I had was whether the uh, town engineer had reviews reviewed your revised plans yet or not because I mean they're uh, the the comments were extensive to say the least and some of them were were rather substantive in terms of you know traffic flow and so forth so. Um, you know, if, if he hasn't had an opportunity to review the plans, I, I would um, be inclined to keep the hearing open until we get the feedback from that, just so that at the end of the day, we have three or four potential open issues rather than 35 or 40 potential open issues. So, Yeah, actually, you know, just to tell you, to the best of my ability and knowledge, Almost all of his issues we addressed, and he's probably down to one or two at, at most, but I agree with you that we really have to wait for his final comments. Okay. Will you have uh, new plans shown because there were so many? Um, they, were all, they were all slight modifications. It was modifications to allow okay. a sheer drop island on the north side at the exit of the car wash to allow people to swing back in. Um, the, the development of the infiltration ponds was, was clarified. Um, and and it, they were numerous, but they were actually uh, well suggested to be very candid with you. And so we, we complied with all his thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and the plans that we got in our packet, I think are dated the October 15th. So I, I, I saw that they did reflect your responses to a lot of his comments, but uh, you know, I didn't think, given the given the timing, that he would have had an opportunity to have reviewed them yet. Great, thank you. Um, have you gone to design review, or yeah. are you required, Peter? Him, him, is he required to do that? He uh, he is required, and he did receive that um, approval, I believe, last Wednesday night. So we are in the process of generating the approval letter for that, but. Um, I think it was approved as submitted, Alan. Was that the final correct. decision? Yeah. Has he gone uh, to the State Traffic Commission or is there no need to do that? There's no need to do that. Um, uh, he, he might have to get an encroachment permit if he works on uh, any of the driveways, but um, there's, no, there's, no, um, there's no other DOT approval required. Okay, thank you. Can I ask Alan, do you think he'll be prepared in a couple of weeks? Because the engineer's memo was dated September 24th and Peter, yours was the 29th. Do you think you're pretty much being able to wrap it up within a couple of weeks? I see no problems with that. Is that two weeks away, you said? Yeah. 
Absolutely. The next meeting, I guess, Peter? Uh, November 4th, the day after election day, I think it is. Peter, are there any issues with environmental issues with the uh, storage of the storage of the uh, oil waste on the site? That was one of my um, questions. Maybe Alan can uh, speak to that. I see there are some floor drains uh, in the uh, Valvoline uh, proposed Valvoline. Could you maybe uh, talk to uh, what um, policies, what precautions are in place for the um, for the oil? Okay, uh, very, very interesting. And first of all, this is a very large uh, franchisee. He owns 350 to 400 stores. He has, uh, he's very sophisticated. He maintains cleanup operations and, and, and services to clean up any, any spills that do occur. But all of the oil is stored in the basement. Um, a couple of things happen. They have a detention, retention area in the basement to take 150% of any one tank breaking and it stays in the basement and it's a sealed system. Um, the oil changing today is a very uh, clean operation. You, you don't see cars dripping oil anymore like you probably did when I was younger, um, probably older than all of you. And, uh, but it's a very, very clean operation um, and everything is confined in the cellar. When they go and they remove oil from the waste oil from the tanks, they actually pump it into a truck and vice versa, when they fill oil from uh, a truck to the basement, it is done in the facility. Um, the, you know, I could probably, if, you know, I should do this at the next meeting, is, is provide you a letter from the uh, Valvoline saying what kind of uh, protections they take. Um, I'm writing a note on that. I don't know if any of you have been to a, a Valvoline oil change, but they are very, very meticulously clean operations. I, let me just ask, I assume there's no drain in that oil area, yeah, right? Well, you, you asked the question about the drain. There are no drains. No Zero. drains, right. There's absolutely none. Yeah. Can I ask another question regarding, are they handling anything to do with the fumes down there collected? Is there a fan system or anything for there, the fumes? There has to be by law an exhaust system that does take uh, the any, any any confined odors out of this basement, yes, and it discharges it in a fan that goes to the roof. It's a very small fan because it's very very limited. Yeah, as long as it moves it, yeah. Moves okay. it very good. Okay. I have a couple questions. Uh, um, I live in the the townhouse land property that directly looks out at the car wash, which is not the best neighbor as it is. So just curious. Um, Excuse me, could you just give us your name and address, please? Uh, yeah, this is Megan Bianco. I live at 77 Townhouse Lane. Okay, thank you. I'm on the board here at Townhouse Lane and I also am literally the end unit that looks out at this property. Um, the car wash runs from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Those lights are on all the time. It's very loud. I'm kind of hoping that this will be an improvement is there any information that you could share in terms of that east end of the property? I don't know what if there are requirements from the town or if Valvoline would go a little bit above and beyond as a neighbor for privacy fencing for what kind of considerations are there for having residents on your east end of your property? Well, Megan, number one, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised um, that this will be an improvement as far as the traffic. Uh, a, an oil change facility is not like a car wash facility where people all line up on a snowy, uh, dirty day and they're backing their cars. And, and it's, it's actually a, a, I'll call it a much more upbeat professional business. As I say, the people stay in their cars, they go into the garage. Um, I, I have never seen uh, the stacking that you've seen at your car wash uh, in, in a Valvoline. And their hours are standard hours. And I'll say the earliest they would open up, but I, I don't think this is their standard. I could find out, but at nine o'clock in the morning is their normal opening and six o'clock PM is a normal closing. But I will verify the hours for you on the next meeting. Thank you. But, um, I, I'm involved, I built several valve leaves. We have one right down the street from my office and the hours there are <clears throat> nine to five. So it's, it is a whole different professional business. 
Alan, uh, could, you speak to her, could you speak to her second question about um, any proposed landscaping or privacy fencing? Um, that was the other concern she mentioned. Yeah, let me, let's, Megan, I'm very glad you brought that up because I, I, I kind of looked at the area and actually there's reasonably good screening between that and the railroad tracks and the, and the trees that are on the other side. And I purposely went there today because I wanted to be aware of what the neighbors might say. And I could try to put up, and we have a very limited space behind the yard to put up fencing. And it's very interesting because my concern is if I put up fencing and then any snow is, is placed against it, it's going to knock over and actually look worse than it is now. There are, it is fairly substantially shrubbed presently. Um, but there's only like six feet of land be between the parking lot and the uh, Penn Central Railroad land. And I'm not sure what I could do there. I'm willing to listen, and, and, and you expressed your concern to me. I'm, I'm willing to listen, but I almost think that if I try to put up a screening fence that's solid, that it would actually be destroyed. It would look worse than it does now. Um, do you have any ideas you'd like to suggest? Well, currently there are small shrubs. I know whatever shrubs were there about a year ago were cut out by Eversource. And then these smaller shrubs were put in. Half of them are dead right now. Um, and it will be years before there's really any sense of privacy from the second floor of my home. Um, and there's a decent amount of screening at this time of year, but some of that foliage, as soon as it comes down, that south end of the property is really what I'm looking out at um, from my side windows of my townhouse. Did, so, did, did you have a chance to look at my landscape plan that I did uh, include? No, I just got them from Peter right before the meeting, but I will look at them. Okay, so you notice on the south end, there is um, a, a uh, we, we've added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, shrubs around a dumpster area that was completely screened. We've added actually a, a, a maple tree. And uh, on the entire south side, we've actually put plantings between that property, our property, and the property to the south of us. Um, plus that we've planted a couple of trees on islands uh, between the building and the rear yard. Now, um, like, like I say, if you could look at our plans and comment on them at the next meeting, that would be nice. I would gladly will. Okay, thank you, Megan. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else on the commission that has any questions for the applicant? Yes, for Peter? Yes, I do. Tom. Uh, Tom Dean here. Um, the applicant, I think, has done a, a quite good and professional job in making his presentation. He's made uh, quite a number of representation about the, uh, the, the quality of the uh, Valvoline company uh, in terms of how it handles uh, its, its oil change business and the like. Uh, I wonder if there's any uh, independent studies or, or reports uh, that uh, you know, provide a, an independent uh, qualified per, uh, perspective in terms of how uh, Valvoline has, has operated its business, particularly as it relates to environmental considerations, uh, the issues of uh, oil uh, storage and uh, transfer and the like, I think, are of concern to most people. And uh, if there are such studies uh, or reports, uh, I think it would be useful for the commission to have them on record. I will be very happy to ask the question. And if I, there I, are, I, could you the way, provide the, them? The, the, I'm the owner, sorry. The, the owner of, of this facility, uh, two brothers, live in Simsbury, Connecticut. So they're local. It's not like it's a chain from uh, another part of the country. They're, they're local and they're, I, I'll say, very respected people. I will find out if there is any rating organizations or reports that they have, okay? Or from uh, the the... Uh, Connecticut Department of uh, Environmental Protection or the or the federal uh, EPA. I, I vote the EPA down. That's fine. Thank you. All right. Any other members of the commission have questions for the applicant? Yeah, I have one question. Um, I've noticed you're putting new four new vacuum bays 
on the back side of the lot. Do you, will there be any sound issues with those? I mean, I, I've used the present existing ones on the other side. So do you think there'll be any um, issues with sound or the units? We're, we're using a brand new vacuum system. Right now there's big concrete, I'll call them boxes or something with a vacuum on it. Uh, these are now individual hoses that come off of a, a system and it's much quieter than the old ones. Okay. Man, I hope you are right, Alan. I want to blow those vacuums up every single day. <laughs> okay. Anyone else on the commission? If not, I'll open it up to the rest of the public if there's anyone who wishes to uh, speaker has any questions on this application? Going once. Rich, there are a couple of neighbors. So um, one of them is um, unmuted and the other one may not be unmuted. So. Okay. Anyone want to uh, comment on this application? I guess there'll be another opportunity anyway. If we're inclined to continue this if nobody wants to speak tonight. <laughs> Take that as a no. Are there any other than the uh, the issues that um, Derek raised in his memo, are there any outstanding issues from your perspective? I, I think you're asking me, Rich. You were kind of breaking up a little bit, but um, yeah, I, there are some uh, issues that I had um, identified in, the, in my, my staff memo that uh, haven't been addressed yet. They're more technical. Uh, in nature, the only, the big one is uh, Alan. Um, there is a, an Eversource easement that runs through this property. You are proposing um, some landscaping and some other activities in that easement area. Uh, in the past, they have asked that we um, we get some correspondence from them, you know, saying that they have reviewed the plans and the project. So uh, I don't know where you stand with that. That was one of my uh, one of my comments. You know, I, you, you, you did that. I actually called and I had a hard time getting a hold of anybody. So I, I, I drove to the town and I dug up the easement. It's, the, it's an interesting easement because most CLMP easements that I'm used to, you can't do anything underneath the easement. In this case, you could do anything you want, but they have the absolute right to chop down trees. It's, 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 it's uh, very strangely written. I mean, I, I was astounded by it. And then I went out there and re-looked at the, 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 the overhead lines and they're way up in the air. I can see why it wouldn't affect them. Um, I will run the uh, the shrubbery that we're planting in that area by by them. Okay. If you want a copy of that easement, I'll, I'll send it to you. Sure, we can we can put it in the file for the record in case there's any future uh, questions. The last time this uh, site came in for approval, uh, there were several memos in the file. Obviously, it was a long time ago, so the people will have changed. If you can't find somebody at Eversource, let us know, and we, maybe we can point you in the right direction. Uh, I, as I said, I called corporate office. I asked them for right away department and real estate department, and they just uh, did not do well. I will take care of that. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else have anything for the applicant? If, if not, um, I think we're at the point where we would uh, like to have someone make a motion to continue the hearing to Wednesday, November 4th at 7 o'clock p.m. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. So, George. Motion by Tony, second by George. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank you. 
All right, we will move to item 3.2, public hearing application number 2056-20Z, Brandon Albright seeking a special permit in accordance with 3.6, accessory buildings and structures to replace an existing shed with an oversized shed 12 by 20 at 11 Goff Road. Is there someone here on behalf of the applicant? Hi, that would be me. And uh, thank you for having me. So we bought this house in April and there was a shed in the back right corner that was and we decided that uh, your sound got muffled. I'm having a hard time hearing. Yeah, I mean and, and just please give us your name and address for the record, even though we can guess what it is. Okay, sorry. Uh, Brandon Albright, eleven Golf Road. Can you hear Thank me you. now? Yeah, that that's better. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, our shed was dilapidated. It was a 10 by 14 shed, and we want to replace it with a 12 by 20 foot shed. And um, yeah, my, my presentation is not going to be as elaborate as the one we just heard. That's pretty much the, the nuts and bolts of the story, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any underground oil tanks? No, not on the property. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. Any electrical mm -hmm. lines or other utilities running out to it? Nope, we have underground lines that are on the um, south side of the house. So, you know, 100 yards away from any type of wire besides our electric fence for our dog. Oh, you're in the wide open out there. I went and looked at it today and you got the country club behind you, parking lot that's hardly used. And yeah, uh, oh yeah you got, and you got a big lot. You yeah, know, house in a big lot. So, so we need to shed. Are you going to have um, electricity or plumbing in the shed? No. Okay. No, Just it's storage strictly. of yard oh, stuff. Correct. Yep. Okay. And it's pre-built by uh, carefree home buildings or small buildings, so we won't be constructing it ourselves or anything. It's it's not near any others in the neighborhood. Uh, Design-wise, does it? No. No. Walking no. out there, I don't remember it that way. So. Yeah. I didn't think so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Just a clarification, if I might. Uh, I I think I uh, understood the applicant to indicate that. Uh, the existing uh, shed uh, that is to be replaced is uh, 10 by 14. His application says it's uh, 10 by 16. Uh, I'd just like to know, for the record, which is, uh, is the correct size of the existing shed. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the application. Where, where would you see 10 by 16? I see 10 by 16 written in the application on the first page, and then I see 12 by 20 on the site plan. Yeah, the 12 by 20 is oh, the sorry, proposed sorry. shed. Sorry, sorry, then I miswrote that in the, um, in the application. It, it's actually 10 by 14. I, I wrote it 10 by 16 in the application. Apologies for that. Okay. Just, uh, just wanted to correct for the record. Okay, thank you. And the footprint for the building you took down is how big? It would be um, twenty-two by fourteen. The right. old one. Oh, no, so no, the old one. I'm sorry. The it was uh, the ten by fourteen. So it was exactly. Okay. So it's pretty much built right there. on the ground. Plenty of room out there. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? If not, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this application? One last time, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this application? If not, I would entertain a motion to close the hearing. 
Motion so made, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion by George. Is there a second? By Tony second. Hall. Second by Tony. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Is there a motion on the application itself? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. I don't can't think of any conditions for it. I'll okay. second the motion. All right. Peter, just to confirm there are no conditions that you are aware of? Nothing that I would recommend, no. Okay. Um, any further discussion? If not, the motion to approve the application has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to other business, we have the 2021 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting schedule. Uh, first and third Tuesdays with the exceptions of random Wednesdays following holidays is what it looks like. That is correct. You didn't make any mistakes, did you, Peter? On it? Um, <laughs> If I was betting, I would uh, I would say no, but I don't bet. So, is eleven is November second election day, or is it the week after? Um, good question. Um, I was the third. I thought it was the third. No, next year. Next year, I'm talking about yeah. My calendar doesn't have that many pages. Let me see. Let's let me look it up here. It's not a November 2nd. Yes. So that one gets moved. Oh. Yep. So we want to move that to the third. Yeah, so that would be okay. So they'll probably have the council meeting on the Monday. No, they usually cancel it because they use the, they use the chambers chamber for counting for, uh, right. for election day registration in the yep. absentee counting. All right, so I'll put a question next to that one. See, see, George, that's why I don't bet. There you go. <laughs> You're close to being perfect, but not quite there, Peter. <laughs> Any other days there that look a little squirrely or? Uh, seven, seven, 20, seven. 20 should probably be 21. 21. Yep. yep. <laughs> Going back in time. Darn it. Got yeah, me. I, mean, I don't think anyone wants to go back to 2020 if they have the, the choice. Mm. And seven, four is, um, what Sunday. So is it Monday? Like, is there like an observed holiday for that? Yes. Is it, is, it the Friday, is it the Friday before? Is it the Friday before or the Monday? No, it's usually the Monday, and then I think that's because the council was moved to Tuesday. So it's because it's a Monday is the observed. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion to approve the 2021 meeting schedule as amended? So moved. Okay. Second. Uh, okay. Motion by Tom Dean, second by Ryan. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, item 4 2 liaison to the Weathersfield Economic <laughs> Development and Improvement Commission. Now, I thought at the when we did voting on commission offices that and you brought up all the positions then i thought i volunteered for that and we approved me to be economic development liaison i don't know 
Yeah, I think we were delighted to do that. So most yeah, I was shocked I even said it, but <laughs> <laughs> next item. Well, is is the is the point that um, Dan Silver was holding that position and now we need to appoint George to fill it? Yes. Okay. I'll entertain that motion. Second that. Oh, I mean, sorry. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion by Mike Vieira, second by Tony. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. There you go, George. All right, minutes of October 6th. Peter, send me a, it's the third, what Thursday is it that the economic development meets? Every Thursday. Second Thursday. Every, second and second Thursday at noon. Second Thursday, thank you. And when we, uh, when we end the virtual meetings, there might be a, a lunch, occasional lunch in there for you. Sure, okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. It'll be, a, be a heated contest for that next time around. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> I should have mentioned that at the beginning. Sandwiches. Refrigerated sandwiches for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is uh, minutes of October sixth. Does anyone have any comments or changes? Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, the only thing that I noticed, and I'm not even sure, is on item 3.2, which was the second public hearing. Was it a second public hearing? Because we never voted to close it. And I couldn't remember whether it was a public hearing or not. Uh, the last time around, you mean? Yeah. No, I, we never, we never got to, never opened it. So um, they didn't show. They had still had a bunch of staff comments. So I, it was might have been on the agenda, but we never, we never opened it. No, this is um Doug Bucks. Oh, I'm sorry. Center. I thought you were talking about the second item tonight. Um, no. Yes, the second was um, an amended site plan. It wasn't a hearing. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, with that in mind, is there a second to George's motion to approve the minutes? Second. Okay, motion by George, second by Dave. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I'm abstaining. Wasn't here. Okay, Mike's abstaining. Uh, staff reports. Uh, Rich, I, I had sent you a, a memo. Uh, we have a potential um, for a brewery that wants to come to town. Uh, I would posed a question for you. I don't know if you had a chance to think about it. I just needed some guidance to, uh, if I have to put the wheels in motion to amend our regulations, uh, I wanted to get on top of that. The question I had uh, posed to Rich is that our um, liquor, uh, reg alcoholic liquor um, regulations do not specify breweries as a particular type of alcoholic liquor permit. Uh, however, our regulations miss a whole bunch of others that are also in the statutes, uh, some of which we have approved in other uh, locations without them being in the regulations. Um, so the question was posed to Rich whether uh, if we do have a brewery that wants to come to town, could we consider it under the category of other similar permitted uses that require a public hearing and require a special permit? Or do you want us to write some new brewery regulations um, under which they could apply? So that was the, the general question I had. And uh, if, if we need to write new regulations, I wanted some guidance so that I could probably get on that task because the statutes require us to wait basically six weeks after we file the application in order to have a hearing on any changes to the regulations. So um, 
So Rich, sorry to throw that on you, but I just wanted, I wanted to see if you had time to think about that since we talked. No, I mean, and, and I'll, I'll admit that I fell through the cracks. I did give it some thought and, you know, I, I could see the merits kind of on both sides that, you know, if, if we're signing off on something to the Liquor Control Commission saying, you know, this is a permitted use, um, you know, if, if they look back and say, well, you know, show us where, but if, if it is similar enough to the other proposed uses in whatever zone it is, you know, that we can with a straight face say, you know, yes, it's similar to, um, you know, a food establishment, a restaurant or, or some other kind of, you know, retail dining liquor establishment that, you know, that it, that it isn't, you know, just kind of a ridiculous stretch of the imagination to say it's like something, um, you know, that, that would be a quicker way to do it. Um, the what only I can, other, what the I, only other I, I had ahead. was that if there were specific restrictions, conditions, parameters that you thought were appropriate to put on that, it would probably be good for the applicant and for us to know that in advance, even if we don't go the route of, you know, writing a, a new set of regulations for the use, just so that, you know, basically the, the ground rules are, are laid out as far as what, you know, what the town and the commission's expectations are as far as, um, you know, intensity and so forth, so that, you know, it, it isn't a case of, uh, everybody being surprised at, at what we're looking for versus what they're looking for. And, and I can also advise them, you know, look, if if you're interested in doing this, we don't have specific regulations. If you want to propose something, you know, that 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 um, is, is on them to be aware before warned that, you know, if they want a different level of comfort, maybe a regulation amendment would be in order. Yeah. Peter, don't you think some kind of an amendment ought to be made to the existing liquor type regulations that we do have? I, I think if we do, there are you know? yeah, even if we if we do, I think there are other types of liquor permits that should also be there as well. It, it would be more of a comprehensive change than specific to breweries now that I've researched this a little bit further. So um, if this perspective um, brewery doesn't surface shortly i will i will probably come back at you with a regulation change i was just getting nervous that if this is a something that they need to get approval in fast order i wanted to be aware of that so we use this time wisely yeah while we yeah, wait. And i'm sorry i didn't get back to you sooner okay. on that one it's okay yeah i mean and we had we had uh, Pete Lombruni come in a, a year or two or three ago with a, you know, possibility of a farm winery over on the east side of Broad Street. So, right. you know, if we're going to do some writing, we might think about writing that as well. Yes. Yep. I would agree. And uh, Liam Bruni is still doing his grapes down there. I go down and see him once in a while and down on the Broad Street Green and he's having trouble down there. And I can see why Weathersfield never became a big winery area and uh, <laughs> having real difficulties with, with our climate here and other things. So at, at terra firma. No, I'd like to see something in our regs, even if it's minor, really. OK. Uh, yeah. I, I guess I, I would I agree with what Rich said. I agree with what George said. I just think it ultimately is better protection for any applicant i think the neighbors know where they stand and i guess i'm just wondering you know and we may want to depending on whether these are just production facilities primarily versus mm -hmm. a full-scale restaurant is it possible we might want to say you can do them in certain locations not in others you know certain size whatever and, and i guess if they're going to be signing off on a different type of liquor permit than a restaurant permit could that Ultimately, you know, if it's like a producer or manufacturer permit or something, I don't know how breweries are regulated, but could that be awkward in the 
in the zoning sign off if everything else in the district is more of a, of a restaurant. Yeah, we don't we won't <laughs> sign off on that state um, form unless and until you guys have signed off on it first. Okay. So the fire marshal and those guys can, but the zoning authority, um, we do not sign off on that until after they go through whatever land use process they're required to go through for us. Okay. But I just, oh, sorry, go ahead. Nope, no, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, no, I just think if any, if anything's gonna be put in writing, it should be kind of more broad because like Joe just pointed out, you know, it's there's a lot of different business models for breweries, you know, whether they're production facilities or a brew pub and they're just looking to serve like a restaurant. Um, so if, if anything, if we, I think there should be something, but if anything, it should be kind of broad scoped enough that we don't leave anybody out. So. All right, thank you. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? All right. Um, okay, that was staff report reports. Uh, next item, public comments on general matters of planning and zoning. Are there any members of the public lurking around need to say anything? Guess not. Um, correspondence 8.1 state of Connecticut DOT regarding 24 Maple Street. Peter, can you kind of give us some background on this? So if, if you remember 24 Maple Street is the, um, the artisanal burger um, company uh, project at the corner of Middletown and Maple. Um, after the PNZ uh, approval or maybe during the PNZ approval, I think the town engineer wrote a memo to the DOT. I'm trying to get my ducks in a row here and look at the timing. So in August, I'm sorry, so it was much later. It was August of uh, this year. Um, the um, town engineer had some concerns about the curb cut primarily on the Maple Street side, the Route 3 side, which is a state, um, state highway and um, ask them to be aware of the approval and to weigh in on the uh, traffic uh, movement at that particular driveway. And the letter dated October 5th of this year uh, to the town manager in his legal traffic authority capacity, uh, written by Daniel uh, DiRienzo um, from the Rocky Hill office uh, basically is recommending um, some modifications to the uh, plan that you approved as a commission regarding uh, the turning movements. They felt um, there could be created an unsafe condition with the full use of that driveway on uh, Maple. Um, so that is the Reader's Digest version, I think. Okay. So do... I, I guess I have two questions. One is, is there anything that we need to do or will the applicant have to come back for a modification to the site plan to reflect what the state is asking him to do? I don't know that it rises to the level of having to come back to you guys, but they will definitely have to comply with the state uh, restrictions on, on the permit when they get to that uh, point in time. Uh, I, I consider them um, kind of minor in nature and it's under the purview of the DOT anyway. So I think even if you felt otherwise, uh, the DOT- uh, They win. They, they win. Uh, uh, I gotta yeah. win, yeah, you're right, Rich. Right, so, and it was, a, it was discussed during the public hearing, I think, anyway. So we went back and forth on that. And, uh, and we, I think we knew at that time that DOT was gonna have to weigh in anyway. So uh, here we are. Um, and then hopefully the developer um, will do the project. Uh, as you know, you gave them an extension of time. So hopefully that will still, um, this project will still surface. Have you heard from them lately, Peter? I, I have not actually, I, I, I reached out to Joe uh, today on a different matter. So I'll, uh, I'll talk to him and find out what he's thinking about um, and let you know if he's come to any decisions yet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and I guess, Frankly, the second thing I wanted to say about this is I, I thought it was kind of odd that 
you know, basically more than a year after we give our approval, the town engineer sends a letter to DOT saying that we didn't do a very good job with our approval and he's got all these concerns. Um, you know, I, I, I don't dismiss the issues that he's raising. I just thought the, you know, the process was kind of odd that, you know, that we didn't have a full discussion of this issue, you know, and a resolution of the issue with the town engineer's input at the time we were initially approving it. And, you know, we grant somebody an approval, they go off their merry way and were it um, not for COVID, they probably would have been ready to start construction. And then, you know, essentially it looks like they're getting sandbagged with you know, additional contrary comments a year later that, uh, you know, undercut what it was that we had approved, but that is what it is. Yeah, I'm not sure if it came from the police department traffic or, or not, but yeah, I can't speak to the, the recent, uh, ti the timing of it anyway. Okay. No, I mean, I, I just thought it was odd. Yep. And the last item is the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies fall quarterly newsletter. Um, doesn't have an explanation in here of how they're gonna bring ZD to our houses, um, you know, in lieu of the annual dinner, but it's got some summaries of cases and a discussion of some proposed legislation that might be of interest to some people. Yeah, just um, so the commission members know, there is a whole uh, initiative called uh, desegregate Connecticut uh, underway. There is some, uh, I think it's the first uh, citation in this quarterly newsletter. Um, and the CFPZA has some concerns about where this effort is going in terms of it potentially undermining local zoning control. So, um, you know, that's probably the biggest takeaway from this newsletter is for you to be aware that there are some efforts to change some statutes um to um open open um uh some zoning in in some communities and there's some concerns uh, and i think these these uh, this this uh newsletter speaks a little bit uh to that concern so just so you're aware of that yeah i'd like a copy of it uh peter a copy of what well, the, the newsletter, I guess. Yeah. It was in the packet. It's in the packet. The back. Then, I'm sorry, I missed okay. it. I apologize. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and I, I saw kind of a, a draft of the legislation over the summer. I don't know if any, um, any revisions of that have been floating around. That was when there was some discussion about trying to have it taken up by either the July or the September special sessions of the legislature, but uh, you know neither of those came to pass. But it, it will certainly be a topic of discussion um, in January when the when the new general assembly comes around. All right. Anything else anyone wants to uh, raise here tonight? Do you think the, uh, Peter, do you think the zoning text amendment regarding self storage will be at our next meeting or sometime after that? Yeah, it's uh, scheduled to be at your next um, next meeting. So we would have two, uh, at least two agenda items. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and I, I may not be here uh, for reasons entirely unrelated to the election. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a continued hearing in another town that I, would like to uh, uh, offload back on the guy who offloaded it on me the other night. So, <laughs> you, know. well, you better do some offloading then. Yeah, really. Yeah, there's no tag backs. Um, <laughs> all right. Anything else before we adjourn? If not, um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Second. Second. Welcome by George, <laughs> second by Ryan. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed.
right. Thanks very much. Have a good evening. Take care. Okay. Have a good, good night. Everybody. Good, good night. night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Night all. Take care.